Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Coming Clean, the podcast that hopefully helps you build unstoppable confidence, live your potential, and reach your goals. If you are watching on YouTube, you already see that we have two very special guests. Today, we have Mr. Hathaway and Mr. Piat. The long <laughs> it's a really long story. We'll have to explain that one in another, in another Q&A. But. Yeah, some people can't read. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are doing a Q&A. We took it to the Instagram stories to see if y'all had any specific things you wanted to know about us. And of course, y'all did not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. All right, y'all. I picked 20 questions. I don't know if this is too many questions or not. There were so many questions. It was hard to narrow it down. But if we go over time, we'll just, you know, kind of bring it on over to the next week. So the first question is, is what is a day in the life like? So I don't know if you want to go first or do you want me to just go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Day in the life. Uh, well, I'm not a morning person. I don't know how many of y'all out there are. I feel like everyone that is not a morning person always say that they wish there were a morning person because I really do wish I was a morning person. <laughs> but sometimes they'll wake up at like five in the morning and they'll go work out. Um, if not, they will go work out with me in the evening. But days really vary for us. Um, I mean, there are a lot of things that we have to do every single week to get done, but really we can kind of schedule our days for the most part, like how we see them. But every day is different. Like today we're filming a podcast. I did a Facebook Live. We have, you know, in-person meetings, Zoom meetings, um, Lambert's a lot of the times filming or editing. Presley has all sorts of activities we have to take her to. Yeah, we also, we don't have a nanny, so we kind of split it up. Jason takes a lot more of that than me when it comes to full work days. But um, yeah, I don't know, day, days days in the life are just so different. As someone asked like how we uh, juggle being parents and working. You want me to take that one away? Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so we, we kind of split time, like as we know, someone has someone on the schedule or they have a appointment they have to go to or a meeting or a phone call or whatever, we try and make sure that we're available to sit there and entertain Presley, take her to do something, keep her so she's not sitting there tugging on mom or dad while we're on the phone, but um, we kind of tag team it. Um, communication yeah. is key. It hasn't always been great. Um, but making a schedule in advance, as Paige likes to harp on me about, makes things a lot easier. And, you know, we just talk our way through through the week as things come up. But every day is like, you never know what you're gonna get. Different meetings get scheduled 30 minutes before and have to drive across town or whatever. So we just make it happen. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm a very schedule oriented person. Like if there's, a schedule it just I don't know I flow better throughout the day I like to know that like he's got the a.m. I got the p.m. or however we're gonna do that and that really helps me because then I can like focus on work during my work hours and then I can focus on being a mom and you know stimulating her brain and helping her learn things and do all the things that we need to do for that so it's kind of like the day in the life for us it's not <laughs> as glamorous as one may seem but um, well, different weeks might be days. Yeah. It depends where we are. So, this guy named Noah asked Jason specifically, what is your morning routine, your rituals, your daily habits that keep you in shape all year long? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's funny, the first thing I would hear is Jason's blender. <laughs> Exactly. No, literally, I he will he will <laughs> take a protein smoothie and take his vitamins before he like feeds his daughter. <laughs> that is not true. That is so <laughs> true. true. I would I would literally just lay in bed. I would hear. I'd be like, ah, yeah, ah, there it is. <laughs> so there, there's step one: get up early. I try and be up. I, I have trouble sleeping as it is, but I get up early um, to be productive and feel productive. 
I normally do like cardio or boxing or some sort of like hit workout in the morning to get like blood flowing and I'm normally fasting. So I start with that and then if I can eat that early, if I'm not fasting that day or fast is over, then I make a protein shake. That's typically before y'all get up or it's maybe when they get up, depending on. And We're like then, the fast family, like the oh fast yeah, and furious yeah, family. We all, <laughs> we are all fasting and oftentimes furious. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think the fasting makes you furious. Um, and then from then, it's just like putting yourself in a situation where you're not having like junk food around. I think that's something we normally do really well. This month is kind of a free for all. I'm taking off dieting, but typically it's, you know, spacing out meals, making sure you're eating within your macros and then fasting. Fasting has been a big one, you know, at least 16 hours not eating. And then we'll go normally back to the gym at night. And that's, that's it. I mean, just creating habits every day, making sure you're up early, doing cardio, eating the right things. And you got to find right what things. works for you. You yeah. know, like for Jason, it works for him to wake up and do cardio. Like that's how he likes to start his day. That's what, what helps his mindset. That's what helps his energy levels. And if he doesn't do that, like, I don't even want to be would, <laughs> wrapped him. I would want to be <laughs> but, It's like a you, horror movie. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I'm fasting and I don't get to work out in the morning, I just wouldn't be. Yeah, you just got to find what works for you, though, and that's going to help you stay consistent, and that's going to help breed results. So, mm -hmm. And creating the environment, like I said. If you have, like, stuff that's going to allow you to make bad decisions around or bad temptations, like, remove all that stuff. Like the junk food in the house. <laughs> Have you seen y'all's pantry to... and refrigerator? We're all, we're all, <laughs> half of it's your, it's all your stuff. What do you mean? I'm going, but I'm going to cheat. I look at Lambert's section of the, I'm like, oh, whoa, what's over here? <laughs> <laughs> he does do that. <laughs> so Davis asked, well, he had a funny question, but he said, what's the most country thing Lambert and Paige have ever done? Hmm. And Go to he your said, grandma's. <laughs> <laughs> True. No, actually going to Minnesota. That was that was so country, but it was, was it was so much fun. It, it was, was like fun. oh, it feels great. Minnesota or North Dakota? North Dakota. Oh, what is it? Tomato North Dakota. Tomato. Well, no. Oh, I mean, yeah, North each Dakota. One, each one has their own special place. What, where's what's her name from? Krista. Krista. Yeah. Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. Oh, that's well, what you're talking about. That's yeah. The country when we when out, we. Man. Oh my god. I the hammock. Money, right? Oh my gosh, that's pretty fun. <laughs> I thought it was so cool to just like hang out in the backyard. Like I haven't done that in years. I that was like catch fireflies. Catch, I know, man. That and that was free to do. Oh my god! I know it was actually you weren't there, were you? Were no. you there? Oh, oh, gosh. No, I was working. Working. That was July Fourth, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Was oh to yeah, we went to the RV park. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Went on the. Yeah. That was so fun. Shout out to Michael. Keep working out there. <laughs> <laughs> he also asked, "Who is the bigger kid, <laughs> Presley or Lambert?" Oh, I'm grown. I'm right. a girl now. <laughs> Who's, is, who's, am I the the judging party on this? Yeah. Gosh, you both have your moments. Labor is a big kid, though. He is. He's like yeah. our adopted child at this point. <laughs> I love it. We have to make a combination. I love it. Like, you know, oh, you know, it feels weird. A big kid to the, on this trip. <laughs> you, you know, you know how sometimes I'll leave at night to go to like in and out, whatever. I feel like saying like. Mom, Dad, I'll be right back. I'll be back. I know he always <laughs> asks us if we want anything from In and Out, just so he can like leave. I think. And make him. Feel it's like mom and dad. Like mom and dad, do you want anything from In and Out? I'm gonna go get In and Out. You know. <laughs> so probably does the same thing too. It's sometimes, like mom going to yeah. Taco Bell. <laughs> sometimes we'll put his car in neutral and push it out of the driveway and not start it till it's down the street, so that <laughs> he doesn't know where to leave. What? You never done that trick? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a no. it's what is it? It's a stall start. Back in the day. It's a, it's a dead start. What? That's so what you're, no one hears your car? Yeah, maybe? so like when you wow. were young. You were like a professional sneaker outer. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. crazy. You would do that because you can hear the engine yeah. from, from inside. Wow. Yeah, my my friends used to do that. Yeah, show. my buddy had an M3 that you know, oh. he would always stay over on whatever mm -hmm. weekend. And if he fired that thing up, you knew that car was starting up in the front yard. So we would literally <laughs> push it. Yeah. <laughs> we'd crazy. push it down the street and then start it up down the street. There's a, there's a viral video of a guy who has a really loud Corvette and literally he wakes up the neighborhood when he starts it up. So he has to drive it. I mean, he has to push it down 
all the way at the turn at the end of the at, at the end of the road to start it up so no one hears it and he has a video he has a security camera of him doing it he's just like there we go it's funny shit at that point is it worth it really? <laughs> The next question is, did Lambert moving in ease tension because he is such a character? I definitely think it did. I think it deflected like certain moments when we maybe weren't getting along. There was another party there to, you know, where we didn't necessarily have to start a conversation with each other back up again. No. And we'd have him. So you'll have president. She's going to be like, oh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. I think. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, I think it did because Lambert just has such a good energy about him for the most part. And so Is he because I'm round? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, ah, look at this kid. <laughs> and so I did think his like light, like, you know, he takes things like more light. He's not not as serious. There's a lot of laughter. And like honestly, I I don't have like a ton of friends in Dallas. And it was nice for just me to like have like someone that like I knew well around me, you know, because I know people here, but I don't like know them well. Like a lot of, a lot of people I like, I know through you or maybe I know through like a business thing from like forever ago, but I haven't really hung out with them much. And like Lambert is like, has been my best friend, was my best friend. Like we know so much about each other. So it was like nice for me to have like a good connection here with someone. You're not good. <laughs> 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 okay, T Blue eight one eight. He had a really good question. It said, "What's a new habit?" Or actually, I don't know if this is boy or girl. But <laughs> they had a good question. They said, "What's a new habit? Habit that habit? You, habit? <laughs> What's a new habit that y'all all picked up from each other that made you a better person?" This is such a good question. What's a habit that we all picked up from each other? I don't know if it's necessarily a habit, but I'm working on it. I have a lot better patience than I do. I have zero patience for anything. Um, so I, I, I think that you have moments where you're also impatient, but you demonstrate patience a lot more than I do. And I'm trying to pick that habit up from you. And counting, and counting macros. I didn't count macros before. Yeah. Like, remember the shakes that I used to make and you enlightened me on what I was eating? I was like, yes. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, because he used to put like chocolate bars in here. Full, no. av full, av <laughs> full avocado, like a couple scoops of peanut butter. I have like granola. 75 grams of fat in a shake. And How like bagged it? granola. Didn't though. you have like granola yeah, in there too? In there. Fruit, berries, banana. Like what? his shake. How good was that shake though? I mean, it was I have good, a but it, shake every day. Shaking. I mean, it had like healthy <laughs> ingredients, but it had too much. Yeah. ingredients in it. Sounds like my kind of shake. <laughs> <laughs> I think one habit that I, that y'all helped me do, and this is like one thing that Lambert can probably testify is like, I'm just, I just like go, 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 go. I don't really have like an, a not, a non-go switch. I don't know. I, yeah, I, she can go all the way to 4 a.m. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, hello. I haven't slept for three but you days. Know what? <laughs> like I didn't, we didn't realize it, but we got our brain scanned and like, this is something that like my brain, honestly, like it's like literally wired this way. Like my brain does not shut off. So one thing that I feel like they have helped me do is like slow down a bit. Like I really used to never watch like, shows like i could not have ever because lambert did we ever watch a show like actually yeah making a murder remember oh, making a the murder. only show that you didn't fall asleep on <laughs> every time when we put out a movie a show impractical jokers oh impractical oh, that, that all was the time. Shit. yeah but that was just like kind of like background whatever, yeah but background like, this noise. is home, home. <laughs> yeah but we never really like slowed down and like like did nothing you know what mm. i mean but now like we like watch shows and like no, it's like kind of nice because when people talk about shows, they're like, oh, yeah, I saw that or whatever. Yeah, we, we watch so many shows. We've almost made it through three episodes of Yellowstone in three months. Well, we just started. We don't get to watch that. But they, they've ha really helped me slow down. And that's like really good for like my mental state as well. You know, and then also fasting. They were fasting and I was having a bunch of like 
issues internally and they were like, why don't you fast? And you know, it might naturally help the things that were going on. And I was like, I think I need to go see a specialist and I need to do all these things. And I did go see a specialist and I did all those things. And the one thing that helped me was fasting. Literally, it worked in like two days. Yeah. I was like, crazy. what? Yeah. I started crazy. fasting because of the depression stuff, stress and depression, lowers your cortisol and crazy. Like all my anxiety, like. What about you? What have you learned from us? Anything? <laughs> uh, uh, eager to hear this one. <laughs> let's see. Where do I start? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. For real though. Honestly, let's let's be real here, right? We've all experienced Los Angeles. You know, like I've experienced Los Angeles. I mean, just as long as you have. You know, uh, 2015 to 2020, 2021. So six years, right? I was over eight, but yeah, you were six. Yeah. And I realized like, damn, man, you know, like just working to live was shit. And then, you know, being around with you guys and seeing how, how many friends he has and how many friends he introduced to you and how friendly they are to you. Like they brought you in like family. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And all of a sudden they brought me in as family too. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. You know, and it's just like, Texas is great. You know, and I've, I've learned that like there are, you know, like Los Angeles is just toxic, you know? And I think that was the number one thing that I got stuck in is that toxic work relationship and friendships that I had in Los Angeles and, you know, for my personal self and Dallas basically like, you know, showed me like, Hey, this is, this is, this is what healthy is. You know, there's a healthy medium and everything. So I've learned the healthy mediums in everything versus like how extreme Los Angeles was, you know, and politics. God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We well, were, you know what? Too far you're that, right. But. It is really hard to also like get ahead in LA. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Super hard. So yeah. here, like, yeah. I mean, you've seen like we used mm -hmm. to live in an apartment in LA. And for less amount of money, we have like a house with a backyard mm. and a garage and mm. you know what I mean? Like all, all the things that we could possibly yeah. know, need. Um, and we're actually, you know, you can put your like roots down here and like create yeah, a life. Exactly. See, that's exactly what that was too. It's like, I feel like I got to learn what, you know, what a proper adult is here <laughs> yeah. from YouTube. <laughs> You know, I don't know if I'd call it that, but yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? There's two different extremes. You know, like you guys are two two great opposites that I can like that you that you, you take pieces off. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I like that. Oh, okay, I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's true. Yeah. Okay, so this girl is Miss Bojangles. <laughs> she asked, I love that Instagram name, <laughs> Miss Bojangles. She asked, how did Paige and Lambert meet? How did we meet? Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> so I remember there was a conversation going on at Shrez HQ and they were like, hey, we're going to bring on a new girl, new athlete. Her name is Paige Hathaway. I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Cool. And then there's literally like the first time we hung out, right? I, was, I think I took you to a shoot with... What's his name? Nate? Something like that? Yes. Remember Nate? Yeah. Yeah. And I did like a vine. And yes. that vine still exists till this day. I looked it up. I was like, <gasps> Does vine still exist? Hell no. It's just your <laughs> best videos that get like that stays on there. But um yeah, I think that's the first time we met. We yeah. shot a shreds video with Ludwig in Gold's Gym in Whippany. Holy shit. I yeah, I remember that. Crazy. Lambert was I don't know if I was like the first fitness video that he shot but he was like so nervous oh no 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 it was the firehouse gym yeah firehouse that's what yeah. It was. yeah yeah and he was so nervous <laughs> he literally made me do like the same motion like 10 different times because they, they, they were like hey we need like good butt shots and i was like <laughs> no problem <laughs> He made me do like 10 of the take, like every single take we would do, I repeated it like 10 times for him. Yeah. Like 10 times. But I didn't really know because I was still like Shit, I didn't know starting either. my career. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like I'm filming for this company. 
And then yeah. Lambert was probably thinking like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm filming for this company. We had no idea. Like, oh, this is so cool. I'm filming this girl's butt. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can tell her whatever I, I, I can tell her whatever <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> what's next? <laughs> uh, this is a great one. This is it's so one. funny though. Like I look like, I remember when that video, when he edited it and I watched it for the first time, I was like, this is the coolest video I have ever seen. And then I look back at it now and I'm like, I posted it on my Instagram and I watched it over and over. I was like, yeah, what is this? <laughs> but at that like time of social media and stuff, those mm -hmm. types of videos were non-existent. Yeah. Nobody so, did that. No. It was like, you know, you know what? If you think about it, like think about this, right? Instagram took over. I mean, no fitness took over Instagram. That was like the first biggest industry to ever explode on Instagram yeah, and yeah. like I, I think okay my personal opinion right since forever ago that I thought of this I think without fitness Instagram wouldn't be what it is now probably not yeah because like what was on Instagram nothing nothing was on Instagram the Kardashians great I think that probably goes both ways though I mean fashion fashion is like on everything fitness would be where it is as an industry yeah maybe maybe social media. yeah yeah, but, but maybe like later, you yeah. know, maybe Especially like, like yeah. 2015 would have been like the latest that it gets discovered. Not like in 2012, how like we all got in and then we were like, oh, fitness this, fitness that. Oh, a thousand followers. You know, yeah, just, yeah. No, it is crazy. Yeah, I think it really advanced, especially for like female, in the female category. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, though, that I think is so cool is like through the years, I don't know, like Lambert and I have just worked so well together and all have like a crazy idea and he'll have like a crazy idea and we'll kind of like marry the crazy ideas like remember that time when we were filming like motivational videos where oh, like yeah. all kinds of like different traumatizing events that people might go through yeah. to find fitness that was like storytelling yeah no audio to either get to fitness i know yeah. i think we should bring that shit back i know we should I, i've been wanting to do something about like something yeah if you guys are Can't wondering what we're talking about time. You Something could buzzing. look on YouTube. Okay, next question is probably something that everyone wants to know, and that is Lambert. Describe <laughs> your dream girl. My dream girl. You gotta have a fat ass. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. You know what? Okay, let me tell you something, right? I ain't got no type. So, I <laughs> So I, okay, so last year, my life was ruined by some redhead, right? I'm not Straight gonna name names. Should, no <laughs> names, but you know who you are. You should do the ee 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 noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And, and like, yeah, my, I don't know, like mental, that, I think that was one of the, I, you know what? Here's the thing, right? My whole life in all my relationships, it hasn't gone right. You know, women usually like leave me. That's, and usually the, the problem is me too. But it's like, it's such a toxic thing, you know, like we go back and forth and we don't, you know, come back and communicate with each other. So that's been, that was an issue back then. And now, now, I've, and I was like, shit, you know, what I realized, I realized like I've always pursued women, but I've never pursued my own peace. And then when I pursued my own peace, I was like, chilling yeah you know, it's like, like you don't it's you what let's like you don't like feel like you need someone yeah, in your life yeah i don't chase romance anymore i don't chase i don't chase you know women anymore you know what i do have a high appreciation for women you know because i'm like dang girl like you walk around this earth like that <laughs> you carry that fat ass that okay. must be a lot of work <laughs> that's you with no makeup shit <laughs> you came out the factory like that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like I've, I've chased now I've like I've chased peace, you know, and then since then it's just been great. So I haven't really like, you know, do I have a dream girl? You know what? Just just if there was a woman to come into my life. Right. I just hope she's just good to me, to my friends, to my family and she's everyone. Got that I, and she, <laughs> cause she got a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> She got fit in a size 40. Ugh. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, she doesn't have fat. She'd be 
twig if she wanted to. Just kidding. No, I, I, whatever. Who cares? Like, <laughs> I. Every, everyone deserves a shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everyone deserves a shot. Yeah. So with that being said, we are doing a late a dating thing for Lambert here <laughs> soon. So if you're interested in dating Lambert, be watching my Instagram because that, those applications are going to be going up and we are going to be picking people to go on a date with Lambert. Because we missing, are trying to find Lambert the love of his life. If you're missing limbs, please apply. <laughs> it don't matter. I can just hold the other hand, you know? If you don't got hands, I'll just carry you. <laughs> I'll carry you with your limp foot. <laughs> he can carry himself. He can carry himself. All right, next question. It is for Jason. What's for me? Yeah. What yeah. helped us get back together during su such tough times? By Lauren back Genesee. After having such tough times. Uh, work, communication. Um, work, not meaning like work, but working on our relationship. Yeah, yeah, working on our relationship. <laughs> well, yeah, like a lot of work. Not, like it wasn't easy, it just didn't happen overnight. Um, a lot of communication, um, kind of talking about our feelings, which is not something I like to do. Because he's from Texas. <laughs> Seriously. Opened up more about it as of late, but. Um, Jason is very like. I don't know, like, I don't want to say monotone is the, the word, but he's so like, like kind of, you know how like Eeyore has one tone and it's like this. And like Jason is very like this. He doesn't show his emotion. If he's like feeling some type of way in our relationship, he just doesn't show it. He's just like this. So <laughs> that's it's good to are. show emotion. It is good. Cry. Cry, right like a bitch. No. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really emotional. When it comes to like Babies. animals. Animals. <laughs> oh like, my god. You know what I've been seeing on TikTok lately? No, like, I've been I've been more emotional in a relationship is. as of late. That's what helped. I think. No, I think what has helped us spot. more than not is like just digging deep within ourselves and figuring out like what we personally can do better and doing that better. Obviously along with like communicating and you know, just doing better in our relationship in general, doing and reminding each other those things that we did in the beginning. You know, like for me, I felt like we didn't go on dates anymore and he didn't do like those sweet things that he used to do when we dated or that, you know, just certain things that I felt like he needed to work on that he really did work on. And he also did stuff with like his hormones, like actual things that like were causing yeah. an yeah, issue in our relationship, of our relationship that he, yeah. you know, kind of had no control over. So it was really like kind of getting down the core of things that were wrong, you know, mentally, men mentally, physically, and emotionally, like honestly, that was like affecting the way we treated each other or the way we felt about ourselves throughout the day that affects your relationship. So just kind of like getting your skeletons out of the closet and just truly being happy with yourself helps yeah. the relationships around you. Yeah. There's a saying that like, before you can love someone else, you have to like love yourself. And it's like pretty true. Like if you can't, if you're constantly battling something within yourself, like you're never going to be able to like give that person what they need or what they deserve. So it starts from within for sure. And I think that was a lot of the work that I did. That was like the foundation of like <clears throat> how it all started to like unravel in a more positive way. And then obviously we did do you know, couples counseling to help us better understand each other because we're just like so different in so many ways and understanding those differences are so important and, you know, just kind of going from there. So, I mean, relationships are work, but they're so worth it in the end. Like I would much rather obviously be, be with him than not. So it, but it's just not easy, you know? Um, and for you to say like, oh, well, this relationship isn't easy and to go into another one, like no relationship is gonna be easy. You're gonna have your ups and your downs and your highs and your lows, no matter what relationship that you're in. So you might as well nurture and water, you know, the grass that's growing in your yard. Yeah, find the battle that's worth fighting for. Dream big. Dream big. Dream big 94. So they ask, 94. What's the most challenging things about being a parent and what is the most rewarding? Right now. Ooh. Her. Right, right now. now. 
<laughs> the twos are real. I mean, right now it's kind of a silly thing. I'm sure that all kids go through this. They, well, she is going through this phase where she only wants me. Um, and it's kind of cute, but then it's kind of frustrating because Jason can't even open like a pack of fruit snacks for her because she freaks out because she doesn't want him to touch it or to help her <laughs> do anything. Um, I'm sure this is just a phase. I don't know all my parents out there if this is Is something. Isn't there a thing about like how like little daughters they love their that, mom they, they now? But like when they get older, they're I like, I did hear daddy, that. Daddy. Yeah, waves. yeah but that's what, that's what he's saying. Yeah. That's what he's saying. And a lot of it does have to do with, like you said, like who's putting in more time. Like the past few months when I've been in Oregon, like you've been like the one every day, giving her everything she needs. So I think there's a lot to do with that. But yeah, it's hard when they can't communicate and you're just like, what? Like they just get frustrated. English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, she's two. She's just now like you know, really kind of like learning how to speak her mind or tell us what she wants or doesn't want or whatever. And she has so much emotion that she just doesn't know how to express. So she expresses them in the most like, you all know, of it. <laughs> she expresses all the emotion and, you know, it's really exhausting for us because it's a lot sometimes. Um, and we're also trying to figure out how to, you know, properly, uh, tell her that something is wrong with her understanding something is wrong in, in like sort of like a punishment but you're only two kind of way um so we're, i mean we're just learning we're trying to figure it out uh you know she, we ask her if she wants to sit in time out and if she does something wrong and she says yes so she doesn't really understand time out so it's just like for us, it's so challenging just learning, I don't know, the different stages that she's going through. And like Jason said, having patience. Yeah, patience, for sure. Because, I mean, it's it's not even like that it makes, you know, just interacting with her difficult. But, like, let's say she throws a fit. You're getting frustrated. There's not really anything you can do. Like, it's just, like, it's beyond your control. But then you're getting frustrated. And then you might take it out on each other. And, like, you don't deserve that between the two of you. But it's now put you in, like headspace where you're like, I'm so frustrated. I have no patience. I don't have any patience for you. Even if it's not your fault, it's your fault. Like that's that's something that's hard too, because it creates conflict that's not even there between us. And you're like, hey, what, what did I just walk into? Yeah, no, so that I think that is right now the most challenging thing, but being a parent is so rewarding. Like she is truly a sour patch kid. Oh, yeah. She can be so sour, but then when she is sweet, it is like nothing else in the world exists like but her like yeah. it is you have like three moments a day where you're like holding back tears you're like you do yeah shut up <laughs> 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 you were saying the other day you were crying yeah. wherever we were wow maybe he we're is at, emotional we were, done with, we were done at the gym and you're like i'm gonna cry I was like, no it is super cool oh, yeah you talk. did <laughs> what was it about well it's bus. because oh, like we awesome. signed up for a gym that is a little bit more expensive because it has kids care and you could take her there for two and a half hours and they'll watch her for two and a half hours and you can work and you can work out and you can just get a lot done in those two and a half hours she has hated hated going up there she cries every time we leave and last time we took her up there was the first time she was like, bye mom, see you in a little bit. And it like kind of hurt my heart because <laughs> she, for the first time, didn't even care that we were leaving. Yeah, it was sad. I, I wanted to cry. It rolls like switched. Yeah, she, I I was was imagine, like, imagine like her. A cuter moment when you're like, oh my gosh, like that is just so cute. Like, yeah, no, it, it is just cool. warms my heart. It really is. And now so she's like, like she can be so lovey and so sweet. And she just wraps her hands around my neck. She doesn't do this to you, but <laughs> she right, wraps right. her hands around oh, my neck. And she just like hugs me so tight and she kisses me like a million times. It is like, oh, I die. So cute. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. DJ Sales underscore 12 asks, which are each of your favorite cheat meals and how often do you have them? Lambert, would you like to start? <laughs> because Lambert today just got a Christmas card from In-N-Out. <laughs> Who gets Christmas cards from In-N-Out? It's more like how often a day does Lambert have a cheat meal? 
I didn't sign up for any newsletters or anything. I think. How that, how did you get a Christmas card from? Probably them? from the time you complained about it having. Oh, meat on. maybe <laughs> the Lambert found like the oh, tiniest yeah. speck of meat. So he's a vegetarian. He found the tiniest, tiniest piece of meat in his food. And no, it was a whole patty. It was. I yeah, it was a small piece of it meat. Wasn't, he goes it wasn't even a whole. And orders a grill. It wasn't cheese, even though. just a whole. Like, this guy's kidding. No, no, no it wasn't even just a whole patty. Meat. It was a double, oh. double. Maybe they gave you the wrong order. God, man. I've had a wrong. I have. I've had the wrong best order ever. Yeah. I got like three double doubles ones. Oh my god! And I ordered a a hamburger and fries. <laughs> and I was like, "What am I gonna do with all these?" <laughs> Eat them. Okay, wait. <laughs> what is your favorite cheat meal? Dang, that's tough. I would say, look, I. This is all the rage right now, right? I mean, you guys know this, okay? You guys know this. Mimi's Pizzeria. Oh yeah. That is straight out Brooklyn pizza that I've had in years. I tried we finding that. that Are you being so well. paid yeah. by them to say this? <laughs> we don't know. Allow, we don't allow that on, on this. I would market. love to just buy the whole entire franchise <laughs> if we could. Because those pizzas. What's your favorite? Oh man. Probably chicken fried steak. But I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love cheeseburgers, pizza. So those, those two are like, I get cheeseburgers way too often. Right now, I just eat whatever I want. Cheeseburgers so are the shit. But they're good. When we're dieting, we actually, we try and do one meal a week that even when we're like hardcore dieting, we do one meal a week that's like, where are we going? But <laughs> Wherever is, God takes us. <laughs> I don't know like what my favorite favorite I is. I terrible after this. Where are we like, going? I don't know. I feel like it depends like how healthy or what I eat that week. And then I'm like, ooh, let's go ham on some sushi or like, ooh, let's get Mexican food. Yeah. I've been craving Mexican yeah. food lately. Last night I was like, should we, when we pulled up to the mic store, there was a Mexican place right next door. And I was mm. like, should we skip the gym and get into one? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, let's go to the gym and then get enchiladas. And then, of course, we never got enchiladas. But okay, next question. And this is question number 10. And I think we're going to wrap it up today with question number 10. And then, if you guys want to hear 10 through 20, tune in next week. But below the influence says, I hate California and I want to move to Texas, but I don't want to leave my family. Any tips? Amber, do you want to? Tune if you build it, you will come. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. You don't want to leave your family. But if you hate California and you're struggling in California, aren't your family struggling too? <laughs> Bring them with. Yeah. Bring them with. You know? I mean, like, here's the thing, right? I, I feel like I feel like Texas is a great place to, you know, build wealth. You know? And then like California right now is terrible. So best tip that I can give you is probably you know do the move to texas create you know what is it uh saying residual income from texas and then go back to california in like five to seven years or whatever you know wait wait until everything cools down and everything's like stable and shit because right now takes that state over um, <laughs> now i would i would present it very logically i would break down like what i mean if you want them to come with you it i guess it that's another question to be asked but i would break it down to them i'd be like look you're paying this much in taxes this is your cost of living this is your cost of rent or mortgage or whatever just daily life this is what it will be here this is what we get for that money present them that and i mean they know you're going they love you yeah kind of i say, mean kind of hard to say no i think start looking writing a pro and con apples. list out is really uh, keen here, but you know what? Uh, my thought on moving is, and and your family being there is, you could always move. And if you don't like Texas, like California is not going anywhere, you can always move back. The great thing about moving to a place like Texas is, I feel that you get a lot more bang for your buck. A lot of things are so much cheaper out here. You can get a you know more home or whatever it is that you want to get for less money um and like the i just feel like the quality of life is a bit better out here i, I don't know like what your goals are what like you know what values you have in life but 
California is not going anywhere. And also the great thing about moving to Texas is like your family can always come visit if they don't want to move. Um, it's super easy to, and you're, and you're going to be saving so much money living in Texas with gas and, and you know, either lease or, a, or a mortgage or whatever it is. And you can visit your family whenever the heck you want to. So my thing is like I, the best decision I ever made honestly was to move away from my family for a little while, uh, just to like, find out more truly about myself like to just get like a little bit more independent and to really like dive deep into my goals and to really be who I am today um I, I really pay a, a you know a lot of it goes back to moving to California I literally packed up everything in a U-Haul didn't even tell my family I was leaving because I wanted no one to talk me out of it and I made a life for myself in California and I also, you know, I, I truly do feel like it helped, you know, just make me who I am today. And again, like for me, Oklahoma wasn't going anywhere. I could always go back home and visit. Um, so if you want to move, if there, if there's just something in your heart telling you like you should go do something, I'm a huge believer in doing it. Like go do it. You can always go back to California. California's not going anywhere. Um, you really, truly just never know, like, if you just don't get out your side of your comfort zone, like, what is out there for yourself? And you never know, you might just, you know, I don't know, I just feel like if something's tugging on your heart to, like, go to California, then, or go to Texas, then you should go. Texas. Texas. Everyone no, who taxes. goes to Texas. Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of in Texas. Mm -hmm. oh, we'll take you under. No, we'll take you. Of a conversation there. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to wrap this one up. And then if you guys want to listen to the rest of the Q&A, tune in to next week. We have a lot of really good questions um, for questions 10 through 20. If you guys aren't listening to this on Apple, go to Apple, rate and review the podcast. You guys can also watch it on my YouTube channel. If you like Q&As and you want to see or hear more Q&As, this was a highly requested video, then just give the video a thumbs up and be sure to tune in next week for the rest of the podcast. Y'all want to sign out on anything? No. <laughs> oh, wow. The crowd loves us. Look at him. Thank you. Thank you. Our dogs. Yeah. Autographs. Yeah. Um, Bye, guys. Bye.